One of the defining characteristics of the EU is its politics by consensus model of operation. Obviously not all 28 member states and their representatives in Parliament are going to agree all the time, and so compromise and consensus are the order of the day. At the very heart of that is the President of the European Council, the man or woman charged with bringing together the leaders and ministers of the member states to advance the EU agenda in all its huge variety. Who is the President of the European Council? What is their role inside and outside the EU? What are their powers and responsibilities? The thing to establish from the get-go is he is not the President of the European Union, as it's sometimes believed. There isn't one of those. The three main institutions, the Commission, Council and the Parliament, each have their own President. The President of the European Council brings together the EU's 28 heads of state and government, who meet at summits at least four times a year, sometimes more. These last few years, with the economic and refugee crises, it was more like seven times a year. How is the President appointed? According to the Lisbon Treaty, it's the heads of state and government who nominate the President. Many don't actually approve of the appointment, but there's a lot of horse trading strictly behind closed doors at European summits, without a real campaign or election fight. Once appointed, the President then has a mandate of two and a half years, renewable once. It's a rather well-paid job. The President receives a monthly salary of around 25,000 euros, give or take. The same as the President of the European Commission. The second President... The former Polish Prime Minister, Donald Tusk, was appointed in December 2014, succeeding the first, the former Belgian Prime Minister, Hermann van Rompuy. The idea of having a president at all was to avoid continuously changing the European Council presidency. Before 2010, each head of state or government headed the council for six months. This rotation was dizzying and impeded proper monitoring and execution of all the dossiers. Now, with a fixed president, the preparation of European summits has become more efficient, even if the rotating six-month country presidencies haven't disappeared. Concretely, what does the president do? Essentially, he's three Fs. Fixer of meetings, finder of compromise, and facilitator of consensus. After each summit, the European Council President goes to the European Parliament to present the conclusions that have been adopted. He's then grilled by MEPs. Abroad, the President represents the European Union at big set-piece events like the G7 and G20, along with the President of the Commission. As to whether Europe should develop a dedicated President of Europe role, a President who represents both the European Commission and the Member States, well, that idea does surface regularly but it's not going to happen any time soon. It seems to be